Ask the Podcast Coach for June 5th, 2021. Let's get ready to podcast. There it is. It's that music that means it's Saturday morning. It's time for Ask the Podcast Coach, where you get your podcast questions answered live. I'm your host, Dave Jackson, from the school of podcasting.com. And joining me right over there is the one and only Jim Cullison from TheAverageGuy.tv. Jim, how's it going, buddy? Greetings, Dave. Happy Saturday morning to you. Couldn't be a starker contrast to last Saturday. It was like 48 degrees last yeah. Saturday. It's like going to be like 95 degrees here today. And so we're, we're, uh, we're kind of in the throes of summer. So welcome to the summer series of Ask the Podcast. <laughs> yeah. And I got to tell you, I'm, I'm totally geeked out. There's nothing more fun than sitting in my office and going, you know, it's getting a little warm in here. I just pull up my phone, go to my Nest app, and or I can actually ask the woman in the tube to yeah. turn down the thermostat. Welcome so. to the world of, of home automation. <laughs> Pretty great, isn't it? <laughs> Until it doesn't work. That's yeah. terrible. Yeah. Yeah, that's. I'm, I'm waiting for the day the electricity goes out and I have to reset everything and that whole nine yeah. yards. But well, you know what does work? What does you work? Oh, what does work? That's right. Like when when we do our coffee pour, a little cup of Java to get you going in the morning. So, but uh, and of course, that uh, coffee pour is brought to you by Mark over at podcastbranding.co. I was thinking about this today. I've mentioned the School of Podcasting and Podcast Rodeo Show. And I'm trying to think what else he, oh, ask the podcast coach, duh. Um, that's the artwork. Mark has done that. He also did uh, the artwork for the Scar Authority because I remember he did. there was a whole, there was a yeah. whole thing of whether they're going to have that cowbell that you were. Uh, I know. You, <laughs> you that I got up. removed from the yeah. show when I was there. That caused quite the controversy. And uh, so if you need a logo, if you need podcast artwork, if you need a full website that's going to look phenomenal, uh, you got to go check out Mark at podcastbranding.co. And if you're like, I, I am really, I'm branding illiterate. I don't even know what that means, Dave. Go over to Mark at podcastbranding.co. He will actually do an audit of your brand. The whole goal of this is to make you look professional. I always mention to people, they actually see you before they hear you. And if there's, you know, three podcasts about your subject and your artwork pops and the other two don't, or it just has my favorite is when it has like a Podbean logo or a Libsyn logo because somebody hasn't put artwork. Ugh, you're going to stand out so much more because you've got this great looking artwork. So go over and check out Mark at podcastbranding.co. Cappuccino, hold the phone. Take me home. <laughs> and if you are watching us live, you can go to askthepodcastcoach.com slash live to watch us slash join to jump into the YouTube video. Or if you're listening to us on Clubhouse, you can raise your hand and we will bring you up on stage. One thing I did want to mention right here at the top of the whole thing is from our good friend Todd Cochran. It's one month before voting begins with the People's Choice Podcast Awards. This year, we added 10 categories due to popular demand. If you are not registered yet, which I'll have to go do that, this is the time to get registered and get your audience prepared to vote at podcastawards.com. Categories that are currently very thin on registrations are best male hosted podcast, best Asian hosted podcast, best black hosted podcast, best Spanish. You're getting a, a there's a, a, what do you call that? A, uh, there's a theme here hosted um, best podcast listening platform. That's a new one. Um, history, leisure, LGBTQ, music, news, and politics, sports, and true crime. How can we be light in true crime? We have so many true crime podcasts. So that's uh, distracted. I think it's light because people are distracted, right? Of just registering. It's yeah. just a matter of knowing. There's so many things going on right now that I think people are just distracted. So. Get your podcast. What's the cost on that? Isn't there a cost to register your podcast? I, th I know last year, I want to say it was something like 10 or 20 bucks, which is not, not much. much. Yeah. And that just, he, he takes a beating over that every <sighs> single year. Like yeah. it's an award show. How can you charge me? You're making my money. Well, yeah. trust me, those things cost. That yeah. costs Todd a lot to do. So, yeah. yeah. So uh, we have Mohammed is saying, Hey, uh, if I cannot adjust the deep tone I want from my voice, what keyword May I search for it to learn for it? Don't try to it, – let, let's take Todd Cochran. And Todd, I, I feel safe doing this because Todd has said this himself. Todd does not have a radio voice. Mm -hmm. Todd sounds like this when he talks. All right. Well, aloha, everyone. 
I'm Todd Cochran, and this is How He Sounds. Welcome to the New Media Show. Aloha. Joining me as always, my host, Rob Greenlee. And so Todd doesn't really have a deep radio voice. He sounds like this. But the cool thing about that is when you hear Todd Cochran, you know it's Todd Cochran. So, and I see a lot of people, I don't want to do it now, but I see a lot of people that will just boost the bass. And I remember when I first got my DBX 286, and I cranked that bass up and it was all and warm. And I had people go, Dave, you're rattling the, you know, fillings out of my teeth. And, you know, it's like, so I, I wouldn't, it, it's one of those things. This is where I hate to say, maybe try a new microphone because I, I get this now where sometimes try a Samson Q2U that's got a fair amount of bottom end. There's the high LPR 40, but just realize the, I, I, I used to say, just get used to your voice because the other thing is, especially because you're asking for what bottom end mm -hmm. when you record your podcast uh, you're listening to yourself through your headphones, but also through your skull. It's called bone conduction. And when you listen back to the recording, you're not listening through your skull anymore. You're just listening through the, just through your ears. So there's going to be less bass. And I always tell people it's not bad. It's just different. And if you've ever been, on a phone call, let's say I'm having a phone call with Jim and we're having a good old time and we're laughing and all of a sudden Jim hangs up because he hates the sound of my voice. Yeah, that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. You know, so if nobody's hanging up on you in the middle of a kind conversation on the phone, your phone is your, your phone, your voice is fine. So, but I realize that sometimes that hinders your podcasting because you don't feel confident because you don't sound like you, you know, so I don't know, Jim, any advice on well, a couple weeks ago, yeah, a couple weeks ago, I used these Audio Technic uh, uh, BPH S ones. You know, and it's got a little, mm -hmm. it's got a little mic out front. It's not the bassiest thing in the world, and we noticed that right away. But um, you know, I went back and listened to that podcast, and after listening to it for a few minutes, you, you kind of forget. Like you don't, you just kind of get used to it. Uh, Muhammad also said in chat he's using a DB uh, a DBX two eighty six. Yeah. If if you want to get better at it, uh, just mess around with the settings and check on YouTube too. There's a lot of audio engineers who've posted videos on how to do these things. A great opportunity to go out there and, and just learn from YouTube. I think YouTube is the collective. It's the beginning of the Borg. Like it's the collective intelligence for, yeah. I hope it's not the collective intelligence because it's not very smart, <laughs> <laughs> but, but there's yeah. a lot out there. Yeah. But he said, I'm trying to sound like an FM guy. Realize a, that is compressed. They've compressed the snot out of it. By the time it goes out over the airwaves, forget about it. And it is, it's really bassy and things like that. So no, but uh, they're, used, they're also using thousand dollar microphones. Yeah. So, you know, if you're, I, I guess, what kind of mic do you have? That will matter. Right. Uh, and, yeah. and what you can, the range but, you can get. So. Yeah. And then um, Jim made a great point. He was using a microphone last week that just by design doesn't have a lot of bass to it. And it still sounded fine. And you can always add bass to it later in post-production and even if it's somebody you have a, a there's a thing with your nose if you i don't know if you have a, a dog that that got in the mud and it smells really really bad and when he first walks in you're like you know and then after a while as you're trying to get the dog bathed it, it doesn't really bother you as much your nose kind of gets used to that pungent smell and it's not quite as pungent same thing i think with your ears i used to listen to a podcast and uh, this woman had gone through uh, some sort of throat cancer or something like that. And mm -hmm. she had part of her tongue removed. Mm -hmm. And as you might imagine, that affects the way you, you speak. And I'm not poking fun at her, but her S is now sounded like this. And it was when I first heard her talking and she was talking like this, I was like, Oh, Holy cow. And I was like, on one hand, I was like, wait, wait for you to get back on the horse. And I swear two minutes in the whole S thing disappeared. And disappeared. I was like, that's amazing. Cause yeah. when it first came on, I was like, Holy cow. Right. And, just went right away. So, um, some good advice out in the chat. Coach Dave says there's also some basic things you can do to exercise and expand your voice naturally. Good warm ups. Yeah. Um, uh, speaking of that, I mean, there's some really bad things you can do with your voice as a podcaster scream, yeah. yell, uh, you know, at a go to a concert, those kinds of things. That's really hard on your vocal cords. Um, yeah. being around a lot of smoke. Uh, some of those kinds of things, those can be really, I mean, that can be very, very harsh on your vocal cords. So, so good, good hydration while you're podcasting. That's why I drink a lot of coffee while we're down here. It's great. No lattes. I, I cut the milk out, um, on that. And then you can add some equipment. You could add a mixer to the microphone and, and it'll bring in, 
Um, and you know, uh, Kyle mentions a Mackie uh, FX Pro 8. I've had that or mm. Pro FX 8. Uh, there's Yamaha's got a version. You know, there's a bunch of different ones out there you can use. I'm not seeing Dave. I don't see as many mixers in the podcasting space anymore. No. They've kind of been replaced with the focus rights and you know some of those i have a motu device that mm-hmm. ed talked me into um so i see more audio interfaces of the 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 um the road uh Rochester pro that you're using the the sound designs yeah mix pre three and six right you can yeah. so there's some and, and of course you could use software to do that as well so there's lots of different ways to get that done yeah, Kyle says I dropped my mixer for the Zoom H6. A lot of people are going to the Zoom P4, right. um, all that stuff. James wants to know: Is there a way I can make my accent sound more British? Now you've got a couple different <laughs> British accents that you yeah. do. That was different than the one that I told you not to do last week. Yeah. That was that was more Dick Van Dyke. Yeah, that's more. Hey, guys, now what are you doing there? I think it's yeah. got more Cockney in it, and then yeah. that's you were more, more high British uh, when you were doing the one last. Week. I need to go watch like The Crown or something. I need to. You Mary know, Poppins would be one you could. Yeah, because most of my English accent comes from Spinal Tap, which are a bunch of people who aren't actually British. So, um, yeah, Mohammed says I'm really regretting buying the Behringer. Uh, 1832 mixer as it has a lot of space on my desk. Yeah, I'm here does. to tell you the <laughs> Zoom does. Podtrack P4 is the size right. of a checkbook. I yeah. love that thing. Yep. And then you just do all the EQ in uh, in post. Yeah. Oh, oh, and, you know, the, my Mo2 is this big. Focus yeah. rate's about the same size, so you can do that. Listen, I, the, I, I liked my 8-channel Mackie Pro FX8. I yeah. really liked it. USB had controls but it does it takes up a lot of space i actually built a little spot on my desk where i could slide it back farther and kind of off the back of the desk so i could regain some of that desk space now it was so big i spilled wine into it twice (laughs) right so you know that's the that's the other thing i've been trying to get because you know some spills are going to happen so i try to get that electronics gear kind of up and off the desk so i'm not spilling things into it yeah i actually bought a like a heavy duty music stand it's made for laptops for the roadcaster i don't i guess you guys can't see it but it's it's if i point this down you can see the just grab the camera but anyway it just sits to the right of my desk and it gave me part of my desk back which is hilarious because the part where it is is just now filled with junk so i i cleared my desk so i could then make it much more messy so <laughs> It's uh, uh it has a way it has a way of doing that, right? Yeah, it has a way like, of doing that. It's like, hmm, how much more clutter can I put here? Um Gar- Gary then- says he's got a cool clip mount for his Mo2 M4. That's the the four channel version of it. So it attaches under the desk, uh, only costs like fifteen dollars on eBay. That's a great way to do it. The the only thing is the Motu's got such a beautiful uh, display yeah. on it that I kind of want to see it. Uh, now, Gary, maybe you see it underneath your desk. It would be one of those nice ones too. You know, on a desk, you, sometimes you have those like monitor toppers that you would put on there, little stands that you put your monitors on top of. Mount it up underneath one of those would be really would be really nice. But I like to have access, quick access to it on the top of my desk. It's just preference, right? See, and James is saying, what is the best way for an American accent? From what I understand, mm. we are really into hard R's. Mm-hmm. I remember when I was in Australia, we were all doing horrible accents. And so we had this one woman from Australia, and she just said, I'm going to walk on the boardwalk. And it was just the the uh-huh. fact that, because they would say, I don't know how they would say it, but it was just, she's like, yeah, your R's are and A's and things like that. So. Um, and when in I, doubt, just practice. And if it's horrible, do it anyway. It's I fun. think the Brits are better at doing an American accent than Americans yes. are at doing a British accent. Yeah. I, I don't know why that is, but yeah. I, I just think it's better. Yeah. And well, it's part, always in- part of the issue is the Brits have so many, like London alone has like 17 different accents. Yeah. So there's so many different ones. Now that's true in the U S I mean, we've got a few here too. Yeah. yeah. So we've, well, you've got the whole Southern thing. Then you got the the kind of California dude kind of thing in yeah, Midwest has a, and then upper Midwest. Oh man. Minnesota. Mm-hmm. That whole, they, that, they that sound whole more thing. like Canadians up there <laughs> <laughs> about going about. about, yeah, there about. You go. And then you got, you know, the Boston, you got Kenny, you know, park the car. In the yard, the car. Yeah. Right. Those kinds of things. So New York's got one. Uh, so, well, I, I had somebody this morning in the, um, 
podcast movement group on Facebook. Facebook. Group. Yeah. yeah. And he, it was interesting because at first I was kind of like, Hmm, cause he was planning to monetize a podcast. Like he was really like, Hey, I need somebody to mentor me on podcast monetization. I was like, Hey, I know somebody that can do that. Uh, I know somebody that wrote a book about it. And so I reached out to him and at first he was kind of, I was like, well, tell me about your podcast. How many downloads do you have? Blah, blah, blah. And, uh, he basically said, I haven't launched yet. And there was a part of me that was like, wait, you're, you're trying to monetize a podcast that doesn't, you know, doesn't even exist. So part of me was like, oh, here we go with somebody else focusing on monetization first. But then I thought about it. I said, well, yeah, if, if the plan is to monetize, you should put that into the mix, but it was, it's tabletop gaming. And this is something because I'm old. I, I understand D&D. I had friends of mine who got into D&D. They were like, oh, geez, Jim, I understand you are an OG. Yep. And, and yep, but I, I was busy probably working at the time to play uh, Dungeon. I either had a paper out or I worked. Hit and then, of course, I, I was doing the whole guitar thing in the basement when I got home. I wasn't going yeah, over. Yeah, you were a musician. D- yeah. Yeah. You were a musician. That was your gig. You know, yeah. you weren't some nerd going <laughs> D20, <Yeah>. you know? <laughs> so I was trying to figure out, cause I asked him, I go, are there any kind of tips or secrets or guides that you would have, you know, because you've been playing a while that you could then sell. Cause I'm trying to think like, how do you monetize a tabletop game? Because the idea is people listen to you play the game. And that's where I was like, huh. And then yeah. I, yeah, maybe, big. And this is where we were saying before we hit record today that it's kind of like almost like a TV show where each each recording then would be a part of the game. And I thought, well, you might be able to then do some sort of paid subscription. And after, you know, the the last five episodes are free, the previous 20 or however many you have, you got to pay X amount a month to to listen to those. That might be a way to. uh to monetize, but you're talking about some other game that's huge. Well, I mean, D and D is gigantic right now. I mean, it's it's reaching a, probably the height of its popularity. And there's a podcast called Critical Role that is that is a bunch of voice actors uh, out of Southern California that have gotten together to do this, and I, they've been doing it a couple years now, and it's wildly popular. I mean, it's just in when you think about monetization, Dave. They opened up, uh, oh, I think a year or two ago. They said we're going to start a Kickstarter for a cartoon series. Listen, they're just telling stories that they're making up as they go along. It's it's still a storytelling uh, podcast. They're just making it up with the role of the dice and a, and a good dungeon master, right? A good DM. And um, so they opened up a Kickstarter to do a cartoon. And I think, and I can't remember the numbers. My, my daughter would have this. She's told me this several times and and she'll be mad that I can't remember the numbers, but let's just say they asked for 300,000, to do this podcast or to do this cartoon series to have it made. They did that in the first day and then it went on to like a million and then like 2 million, whatever. And they're like, they kept adding seasons on like, I mean, it is incredible what they've done with this. The, it, what, what I think the advice I would have for folks who are thinking about monetization with their podcast. And I think why it's smart to think about it from day one is you have to, you have, you have to make sure you've made room for it. You know, at one in your podcast, What's going to be your advertising strategy? Because if you go from completely free to start sticking ads in, people are going to notice, right? Yeah. If you, um, if you're not, if you're thinking about merch, you should get that stuff work. Because if the demand ramps up quickly, you know, say this was a hit, this thing, they didn't know this thing was going to be a hit when it came out, right? They just were doing, they weren't goofing around having fun. Much like Leo Laporte did not know Twit was going to be a hit. I mean, it was just him and Dvorak and and Norton hanging out in a bar talking, right? He he thought it might be. They didn't know. So I think having some of those strategies worked out in advance. How are you going to monetize it? Are you going to use in at, in, in, um, what do they call that? In dynamic ad ad insertion. Yeah, There we go. Thank you. Yeah. You're going you're gonna to add them in that way. You're going to do host reads. Do you, have you made space for them? Are you going to do merch? Where is that going to come from? Who's yeah. going to do it? What kind of creative stuff are you going to come up with? So then I think you got to test that stuff with your audience. Yeah. And so and, I, don't th- I don't think it's a bad idea to th- start thinking about it early. Yeah. And then crowdfunding, I think, would probably come into play here because there may not be, aside from selling the game, a product that fits, you know, unless there's some sort of comfy chair or something like this. Uh, Kyle is saying he thinks the tabletop games that have made it big are actually improv 
trained performers uh, that have scripts reading before the game and each character knows the arc in advance. Mm-hmm. Um, he says it kind of looks spontaneous, but it has a lot of production behind it and the scenes to achieve the impromptu Listen, illusion. These, these guys that are doing Critical Role, they know how to make a good product. Like they're yeah. voice actors. They understand yeah. this. Um, they wrote, uh, by the way, they wrote their own intro to this. Like a, mm-hmm. it's an animated cartoon intro to the show. They they performed it. They wrote it. They made it. I mean, there is a ton of talent in this group that that's doing it. Yeah. In uh, improv or not, uh, arc d- determined in advance or not, they're making a great product. And and people are hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of people are watching it. So. Uh, you know, I, this is, this is one of those things where I, this is just a great, they've taken this game of D and D and built a product on top of it. And they've, they've done it very, very well. They've also given a lot. I mean, it's taken a ton of time. This isn't something they're doing. Yeah. You know, they're getting on for one hour on a Thursday night and recording it and then hoping it'll go big. Right. They have spent a lot of time marketing this thing. There you go. And it's like Kyle said, it's that spontaneous stuff that looks like it's, you know, well, and, impromptu. And, and maybe it is, and maybe it's not, but if yeah. it is, and they're still telling a great story, right? I mean, it's still the, the my, my son. It. Yeah. My son yeah. who's in the Marines got hooked on this thing when he was in Japan and was just binging it. I mean, listen, every episode is four hours. This is wow. four hours a week. I mean, it's, it's that, that's, yeah. I mean, even at two X, that's two hours. You know what I mean? It's like, holy God. yeah, I mean, to be able to hold people's attention for that, that takes talent yeah. and they understand they also have, I mean, it's, it's super fun. They have a lot of inside jokes for the audience. Like they've made these things for the audience that they rehearse and repeat over and over and over again. And so they have their own, you know, every podcast has its kind of own things that they say and they have that and it works out very, very well. And Muhammad had a quick question for me. I saw it back here. Did I ever have a podcast related to music? I had a podcast related to musicians, but not music. Um, actually, I did have one for music. I had the best of the worst. And it was a podcast where I went to the Podsafe Music Network, found the world's worst music, and then made fun of it, um, which was great fun. But the my very first podcast was for musicians. It eventually, the final name of it was The Marketing Musician, which I believe if you go to marketingmusician.com points to uh, a dead page and that whole nine yards. But that's one where I realized, where I asked the question, if the goal is to make money with your podcast, does your audience have any money? Because I had a book. <laughs> I've been doing this podcast for 10 years and I put it on sale for a buck and didn't get a dime from anybody. And I went either a, my copy for that was really bad and I wasn't explaining the value of that or B these people had no money. So I'm going to take a little bit of both on that. Maybe it was too cheap. Yeah, that's true too. Cause normally I, th- I want to see it was like 10 bucks. And then I was like, Hey, I'm doing a special thing, blah, blah, blah. And it was funny. Cause that's so old. You could, I would ship you six CDs. It was a long book. Wow. Or, and I eventually made it to where you could download a, a zip file, but it was long, but uh, yeah. So I, many, many moons ago, I, I, and of course at this point I've done a podcast, just about everything. Mm-hmm. So that's always fun. Um, but uh, I made a pot. He says, I was thinking you made a podcast for people who want to enter the, that field, like the podcast you did for people on. Yeah, it was, it was how to uh, get more gigs, sell more CDs, that whole nine yards. And it really was, it was really just marketing 101 and how to, you know, build a website back then was, was a little tougher than it is now and things like that. But like, and it's, for me, it's always the little things that help grow your podcast, grow your band, whatever it is. And for me, I put out a little money and bought a thing called a digital camera, which, and it was 1.5 megapixels, I think at the time, which was Ooh, fancy. Yeah. yeah. And when I would get, like, we would, we would get to, well, first of all, I would talk to people, um, which really was not my favorite thing to do. Again, I'm a little shy, but I'd get on stage and the minute I would come off, I had my favorite, my question. I was like, I, yes, I can go talk to strangers. I say, how does that sound? Like, is that too loud? Is it too? And they'd be like, no. And then I would say, are you guys out celebrating anything tonight or what's going on? And then I was like, Hey, is it okay if I take your picture um, and put it on our website? 
And so they'd be like, yeah. And then I would say, I'm not, I don't need your full name, but like, what's your first name? So I would write down, it was Dave and Kim and Bob and Cheryl. And I'd be like, okay, if we were to name this table, what would we call it? And they'd be like, I don't know. We're, we're from Stowe, Ohio. Call us the Stowe Billies. Okay. Stowe Billies it is. And so what was cool about that is I got to know their names. I got their pictures. They would send people to our website. Cause again, this is pre Facebook. People weren't used to seeing themselves on the internet. So they thought it was really cool but I got to know their name. And the next time they came in and be like, Hey, Dave and Cheryl, what's up? Stowe Billy's what's going on. Just a little itty bitty thing. Didn't cost me anything, but the price of the camera and the price of a website. And so it's really about building a relationship with your potential customers, giving them a reason to come back. You know, Jim, anything you can think of that any businesses you've seen that just do the little thing that makes a difference. Um, well, I think uh, I've gotten several packages where they have handwritten notes in the package mm -hmm. for, for what I bought. So it's very like it's that personal, you know, like, hey, thanks. Hey, hey, Jim. And it's it's obvious it's handwritten. Like, you right. know, you you've seen those now. Look, and we any digital printer can print and make it look like handwriting. But this is obviously was written with a Sharpie. And you go, well, that's that's very, very cool. I didn't expect, you know, I didn't expect that. So, um, I, I, th those kinds of things where they go kind of above and beyond. Ironically, that was a, through a vendor that was selling dice <laughs> for D and D. Nice. My, oh, my <laughs> kids are dice hounds. They, they have <laughs> bought more dice. I, I, I don't know how that became a thing. Kim is at the farmer's market today. Yeah. And she just said she's at a booth that is giving away shot glasses. So that's kind of cool. Like, I mean, think, think that's a kind of a cool way. You could probably have those shot glasses made for maybe a buck each, maybe something if you found something. Although, oh. don't put don't put them in the dishwasher. <laughs> no. <laughs> gonna... yeah. Wa washes the decal right off. <laughs> yeah, because we got one from Vegas that way, and I put it in the dishwasher, and oh. it, the decal literally melted off the, <laughs> off the glass. I tell you what, uh, I'm going to put up James question here in a second, uh, because it's just going to tee off Jim. We're going to go into gear. We're going to go into to technology talk and I need a jingle for that. <laughs> so, so before we do that, yeah, you need a nerd jingle for that. I do need yeah, Jim's going to nerd out. Jim's going to, uh, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> but before we do that, we want to thank our awesome supporters. He said, sharing a screen. Man, it's at that time already. Can I, can is, I get a little coffee pour? A little, doing? little more coffee there. Here we go. Um, yeah. And maybe we should do this. We want to thank, <laughs> I still have that queued up. Our awesome supporters like, um, James over at the Dog Podcast Network. Uh, if you are looking to listen to anything while you're walking the dog, he's got you covered. Dog Edition is a great show. There's, and there's, that's just one of their shows. They have like an extended dance version of that. All sorts of podcasts all about dogs. If you like doggies, if you are a, a hound person, then go over and check out the Dog Podcast Network. They also have a contest where you can win up to $5,000. Dollars. Check it out, Dog Podcast Network. We always thank our $20 supporters, people like Brock Cook over at OccupiedPodcast.com, which is a creative project exploring all things occupation, occupational science, and occupational the oh, crap, I missed the last word, therapy. Uh, Kim, who's in the uh, chat room at Toastmasters101.net. So, you know, Toastmasters is the whole public speaking thing. So if you're looking to develop your voice, uh, reduce your editing time or improve your content, well, Toastmasters101.net. Ed Sullivan over at SonicCupcake.com. You know, every time I see this particular slide, I go, I need to work with Ed to come up with a better. Yeah, I got his cool Sonic Cupcake logo, but I... I need something. It's That's it's a good. It's a white slide with a with a blue cup. Listen, cake. Ed's a big fan of the show, so I just appreciate him <laughs> uh, just being a huge fan. There we go. Max Trescott up in the air at aviationnewstalk.com. So if you're a pilot, you might want to check that out. Um, I have a member of the School of Podcasting, 21 years uh, as an Air Force pilot, and I'm I'm begging him to start his podcast. It's interesting. He's a really great guy, public speaker. Well, we, we can talk about that later. I don't want to, I don't want to share trade secrets, but uh, Shane at spybrary.com. So if you like spies, well, then you'll love Shane over at spybrary.com. He's also got tourpreneur. I'll give him an extra plug there. Uh, Glenn, the geek Hebert. You know how I always say, go to where your audience is. I saw pictures today on Facebook. Glenn has the trailer in this big old truck. He's going out on the road for six weeks 
and he's going to be meeting his and having meetups along the way. So that should be uh, fun. So, uh, and no, he's not doing it on horseback. That would have been fun. It just would have taken longer than, than six weeks. So you can find uh, Glenn over at horse radio network.com Felix, who is actually sending me speaking of merch, Felix is sending me a Latin podcast award t-shirt. So if you are, um, it's a, a podcast award show. We were talking about Todd's podcast awards. These are dedicated to enhancing the visibility of Latinx podcasts around the world. They've been around since 2017 and they're part of the dice network. So um, check it out. Latinpodcastawards.com. Greg, who you will hear on a future episode of the school of podcasting. Uh, he's teaching financial wellness and is also, it turns out uh, he built himself a booth in a walk-in closet and is going to start doing voiceover work. So yet another side gig for a podcaster. Find him over at debtshepherd.com. Uh, Greg at the Indie Drop-In Network, if you got a scary story podcast or a comedy or a true crime show, Greg has an audience for you, and you can feed him your episodes, and he will put it out there in front of an audience looking for that stuff. Find him at IndieDropIn.com. Michael, who's in the chat room at Baby Mountain Radio Productions, where podcasting and hard work are made fun, check him out, BabyMountainRadio.com. And if you'd like to be an awesome supporter or see the other supporters, just go over to AskThePodcastCoach.com slash awesome. And if you want to sponsor Jim's mug or buy Dave's book or do a one-time donation, all that stuff you can find at AskThePodcastCoach.com slash store. Are we ready to get our nerd on? Let's do it. Uh, it was James. The question of the day, does anyone have a good recommendation for a new laptop that is affordable, somewhere around 800 bucks, that serves to do recordings well, as well as a possible live stream, Mac or PC? All right, buckle up. Here we go. <laughs> Listen, you're not if you're you're not going to get a Mac laptop for eight hundred dollars. That's so true. That, Good that's point. Just, that's out. You have to buy used, and then it's all all you know all bets are off at that point. If you do find a good Mac laptop that's maybe two or three years old for eight hundred bucks, that's a pretty good deal. If you're in that space, I would only buy that if you're if you're coming to Mac new. I'd only go new with Mac. I wouldn't I I, I wouldn't buy used to begin with. If you if it has to be a laptop, I mean, I just bought the new M one um a mac mini and that was let's just say it's a thousand dollars so it's pretty close that'd be a, the cheapest entry point into mac that you can get they have a whole bunch of new things coming out if you want to look at it but not for 800 bucks on the pc side of things um it's really just a commodity uh laptops are just a commodity at this point you kind of get what you pay for so you can go to your local retailer find something that's kind of on sale but there's some minimums on windows if you want to think about it that way so you know, you certainly with a laptop, um, uh, the brand, I don't think the brand matters as much anymore. There's a lot of people who hate Lenovo, who hate Dell, who hate um, HP, who hate whatever, right? There's a lot of haters out there because they've all had something that's gone wrong. Um, go with, I, I think, you know, Dell's been a good brand. All those brands, have, I've, I've owned them all and they've been fine. But a couple minimums on Windows. Um, Windows itself, like all the, the software, Adobe, uh, you know, to edit, whatever, it's going to run just fine. Minimum of eight gig of RAM, so don't buy anything less. Windows needs at least eight. If you can get something with 12 or 16, uh, that is even better. Um, uh, if you can get it with it, make sure you have an SSD hard drive of at least 256 uh, gig. If you get a half a terabyte, that's probably better. Um, you're going to fill that up pretty fast, and you just need some scratch space to kind of to kind of work with. If you're not a touchscreen person, don't spend the extra money on touchscreen. You don't have to have it uh, in a lot of cases. In fact, Windows is not very good in a touchscreen uh, environment. Um, it's going to get better. There's some updates coming. But eh, if, you, if again, if you don't want to touch the screen, don't spend the extra money on a touchscreen. And then for me, make sure it has uh, ample ports uh, coming out of there. So, you know, make sure it's got H at least an HDMI port coming out so you can expand it. You can always buy a... Um, a dock for it to expand those ports. But uh, you do want to make sure it probably has, you know, uh, at least a, th a USB 3.1 and some, uh, and I like it to have a, a network port in it. I don't, I don't like to do my network port on a, off a dongle. I like it to be in there. So those are some, those are some minimums going in, James. I would have a, I'd have a look at Amazon or whatever, wherever you like to go. If it's, if, if money is the, if it's 800 and a hard stop, then look in that, compare those, and, and, and shopping does kind of matter. 
compare them going in and then buy it's oh, Dave. There are a million, although it's gotten with the pandemic, it tightened up the supply chain a little bit, but there are a million different windows laptops you can buy. And they're kind of all priced commodity basis. Yeah. Don't there buy, don't buy a used windows. Do not <laughs> buy windows, used windows equipment. Do not do it. Cause it ages fast, yeah. way faster than Macs do. There you and go. if you try to buy something with four gig of RAM, you will be sadly disappointed. With yeah, that. that I can attest to. Never yeah. buy. I bought the cheapest laptop. No, I bought the next to the cheapest laptop once and immediately hated life. So, ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Jim Collison. Find him over at the average guy. That TV. What King I of do. the nerds. <laughs> so. He's a nerd. He's a nerd. <laughs> Uh, we got to get a jingle. So maybe that maybe somebody in chat is, is or somebody listening to the show is creative right. enough to come up with a nerd. I mean, listen, the guys over at um uh, no uh, not no agenda, but the uh, new media show. New media show. They got some some crowdsourced jingles. We could yeah. too. So send us your nerd jingle and uh, if we like it, <laughs> we'll play it on the show. Uh here's a fun question. This is from Michael in a Facebook group. Um I have a quick question. I have a guest to come on Okay, I have a guest who come on the show, and they signed a release. We interviewed them, and now they want me to send them the actual mixed audio file, saying that's the only way they can share it. They did not want to share the social media link or the direct URL, in this case, to Captivate. I've never provided the audio file off of my audio to anyone outside my company. I've just provided them with links uh, from Captivate. What are your thoughts? So my thought on this is it is weird. First of all, that's weird, you know, and because usually what I do is I don't send them a direct link to the MP3. I send them a link to wherever it is on your website where people can listen. But here's the thought on this. Let's say you don't give it to them. All they have to do is subscribe to your show and get the file anyway. So you're going to kind of, you know, do you want to save the relationship? Do you want to be a weenie, you know, Jim thoughts? Yeah, well, I always you want them to come back to the original because you want the numbers, right? Right. But to your point, they, they could just get it anyway. Yeah. So you might as well, if if the relationships were saving, you might as well work with them on it and just. And I would explain that to them. I'd say like for for my numbers, you know, we kind of have a policy at Gallup that we I don't give them the MP4, or I didn't give them the MP3. We want them. We want to drive them back so we can track it. Um, but if they've got a good use case for it, and they're like, well, it'd be really helpful here. Okay. Take it. Like, if you're going to promote it that way, yeah, fine. Like, I wouldn't cry over spilled milk. On that yeah, because in the end, you're still, it is, again, uh, even Dan says, yeah, that's, every, we're all kind of going, that's kind of weird. But anyone they may can not know that, though. They may not. Uh, some yeah. people don't know that, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I just work with them. To yeah. Ask them why. Like, well, t tell me, you know, tell me a little bit more what you're doing. You may be able to take advantage of it, you know, from a, from a outside your bubble perspective. Yeah. And that's, what, that's a great point. That's the whole, right. Understand before being understood. And that's where you're like, well, what are you trying to do with this? Because I can, I, there are a couple of different ways I can give you links. Like I could actually give you some code you could put on your website and it would put the player there. So people could listen on your website kind of thing. And depending what they're doing, maybe they have some sort of, uh, you know, if you give them a direct link to the MP3, they might be putting it into like PowerPress to put a player on that website. In that case, you would get those, but if they want the actual file to, who knows? But yeah, it's well, um, and if they say, Well, I want to upload it to my YouTube channel, you're saying, Well, that's great, but it's gonna get a copyright strike, most likely, or you're gonna it's gonna yeah. show up because it's it's my it's our content already. They're gonna find it. So sometimes helping explaining to them, like, okay, the reason why I don't want to do this is for this. And then working with them a little bit, just let them know why. You know, the the other reason is I can't control it then. If I need to delete it for some reason, say I need to take it down. Now it's out of my control and I have to con find you and con I have to remember like, so we just don't like to do, this is what I'm saying to the customer. Right. We just don't like to do that and, and see if you can negotiate with them on it. Another quick question I saw here, and I don't know if it's just, it may just be me, but uh, this was from Melissa. Uh, she said to start, I was planning on recording through my iPhone. Now I'm going to be in a closet with a blanket, but right there, I just kind of want to go. I'm just like, why? Uh, and then running it through some editing software. Someone said she recorded without headphones and ended up with an echo. That's true. But I've tried both with and without uh, 
and the sound quality seems better, I guess, without headphones. Now I'm wondering if I should just give in and buy a mic. That, my friends, is the right answer. Uh, but I was hoping to get started as cheaply as possible. And also, I seem to need really user-friendly products. Um, will my sound be good enough, at least, if I just start with the phone? I'm trying to look through old posts, but I'm getting overwhelmed, blah, blah, blah. So I, I guess part of me just wants to go. I, it seems I'm seeing, and, and I, I get the consent. Nobody says, hey, I want to spend a, a lot of money and do a lot of work. Nobody, like if you're getting into a hobby, and I get that we all start with training wheels when we learn to ride a bike. Some of us do, at least. And I, I get that. But it just seems like there's a, a, a more people like, I want to do this much, but but end up being Joe Rogan. And I'm like, mm. so could you make a podcast good enough to listen to with your phone? If you're holding it up to your mouth, sure. I did a, a podcast once called Podcasting for Free. And that was how I recommended. I said, you know, record into your voice memo and then export it into audacity and then, you know, add your music and stuff like that uh, and go to town. But I just, I, what I don't, what doesn't work. And I see more people doing this is they put their phone on the table and hit record. And there's no way to make that sound. I, I had somebody that I was working with and they gave me those files and I was running it through RX Dverb, and it was like it kind of took away some of the reverb, but it still sounded very much like they were in a cave. And the the problem with that is when you're in the car or something else that has some background noise, you really have a hard time in some cases hearing. I don't know. Am I am I being too uh, OG no. here and persnickety and get off no. my lawn? <laughs> I think it's I think it's for people who think about transportation and like and they're like yeah, but. I really can, you know, I want to, I need to get 10 miles uh, to work, but I really only have $500. And you're like, well, that'll get you a bike. And then you, will it get you there? Absolutely. It'll take twice as long. You'll get muddy in the process. What about days when it rains? What about when it's really cold? You know, and, and it's just, it's, it's in some cases, it's the wrong tool for the job. Can it yep. do it? Yes could you spend a little bit more? I mean, just a little bit more and try to get a better, try to get some better quality out of it. Yeah. And I, and I think we know that you can do it for about 300 bucks. You know, you can really improve your sound for about $300. So is that, if that's outside your budget, then yeah, your phone, the phone is going to be it. And no matter what you do, I mean, you're putting lipstick on a pig at that point, no matter what you do with the phone, it's not going to magically make it any better. Now, acceptable, Depends on your audience, right? Yeah, that's true. Want, right? Do they want to listen to it? That's fine. But, you know, at the end of the day, you got you to kind of think, this is the mistake I make a lot, Dave. And I don't make it on the $100 purchases, but I make it on the five and six and $700 purchases. Like, I should own a Roadcaster Pro. I should have one. But every time I go to spend that money, I go, ah, no, I don't really need it. But I should really have it. Like, by the way, I am digging the fact that on YouTube I can watch you press those buttons. This is a this is a view we should have had a <laughs> long time ago because I think it adds to the experience when you push the button and I can see you do it. It's fantastic. <laughs> like we should do that more often. Would, um, you, would you like more coffee? <laughs> you know, see, it's just it adds. It really does. I think it adds to the show, <clears throat> but. That's for me, that's my break point. 500 to a thousand. I'm not really good. I, I make, I, I, there's times it's just like, just buy the thing. Like, stop obsessing over it. Just buy yeah. it. Well, so. um, I want to get to Ken's question. Well, actually, let's me, I'll give a great example. Um, I talked to, um, a friend of mine that's really into like home gyms because I went down a rabbit hole of, uh, rowing machines. Cause I heard how rowing machines just burn a ton of calories and stuff like that. But I also saw a really good guy say, I, he, he's a like, just towing, like he is, is just all in on rowing. And he said, but here's the thing you have to know. A rowing machine is boring. He goes, if you're really focused on it, really what you're focusing on is making sure you have the right form. He goes, and it's boring. And he's like, so, and I, but I was going to do it to, cause I'm trying to, to build muscle. And I'm like, I have a total gym. Like if I really want to build muscle, so it's one of those where it's like, you know what I could, and they're not cheap. Like a cheap rowing machine is 600 bucks. And I was like, shut up and just use your total gym. 
Uh, so we do have a question here from the one and only Reverend Ken Blanchard. What's the best way to connect with more than three people in your audience? Asking for a frenemy. Uh, I, I am a big fan of this, the Zoom PodTrack P4, uh, because A, if they're in the room with you, you got four inputs. If they're not in the room with you, you could use something like Squadcast and connect via USB. Uh, you can use, you know, there's a ton of those. You could use Squadcast if you want separate tracks, and they could do that. And just make sure everybody uses uh, Chrome and things of that nature. Uh, am I missing any other ones? There's a ton. Fireside. I'm not sure know. that's what he meant. In oh. his question. I think it me. I think he was asking for uh, in the audience. I I've just been. Is it three people at a time or just? Cause I've just been going because I mean, bringing three people in is easy. Like yeah. we have two. And I, so I don't think that's, I think Ken knows, I think Ken knows that. Ken, I, I, I think we're misreading your question because that yeah. seems too easy. Like yeah. fi- Riverside, Fireside, right. StreamYard, they all, they all provide, you could do it. You know, you can you do a web-based as well. Is that what you mean? So give us yeah. some clarification. Let us know. And in that. the meantime, it's time for Jim to nerd out again. Uh, any good recommendations no. on an expandable like USB A monitor for a Mac Mini 2012 server? Yeah, Dave, this is this is a great question because <laughs> you have a really old piece of equipment here. Yeah, um, and and really anything, a- any kind of docking station. I was I was trying to look that up. There's a certain brand that's um, that's really good on the docking station side. Um, why don't you send me an email, uh, Jim at the Average Guy TV. And, uh, and I, that is one I need to do a little bit of work on to kind of help you with that. That's not one I come up right off the bat. Any, listen, any modern dock that, that supports USB three is that has video ports for you. It's probably going to be fine. You're going to expect to pay between 65 and a hundred bucks for that. So, yeah. And then the, uh, the chat room is saying maybe, uh, Reverend Ken should try, uh, Twitch, and um you i tried twitch you gotta work twitch yeah i yeah. when i went over there there are a lot of i mean tons bazillions of gamers over there there were nobody over there was looking for a podcast so and, i i think what he means is how do i get more audience feedback right ah uh, i think that's what he's that's what he's meaning in this in other words how do i get beyond just three people sending me feedback so ideas for increased feedback dave that's a that's actually a better topic uh, I would, if you have an email list, uh, and you got some time on your calendar or, or not, it doesn't have to have time on your calendar. Get something like tidy cow, um, support the show.com slash tidy cow, T A D Y C A L. Uh, that's a app sumo thing that makes it easy to schedule things and send out an email said, Hey, I'm doing some, uh, market research on the podcast. I want to make it better. I would love to spend just a quick 15, 30 minutes with you the best thing i ever did and i am actually going can i announce this here sure i'll announce it here uh i'm going to start adding one-on-one consulting without making the price go up at the school of podcasting why because i want a better relationship with my customers and it doesn't scale (laughs) it's a bad idea and i was like i'm going to try this and i'm throwing it on the wall i'm just like let's see what happens if i do this but i've already done a couple and that's where i met the guy the the pilot and I was like, dude, you, you've got to, I'm at this point and he's a super nice guy, but I'm now the the dad in the pool saying, jump, I will catch you. And he's going to, he's going to jump. It's going to be great. But uh, um, so that would, and anything that you can make, you know, one on instead of trying to do one to many for me, uh, do try to do some one-on-one to really understand what they're looking for. And plus, you know, that I know that, you know, that I know. But when, like I had one guy when I did this, because I made the mistake, um, and this isn't my idea, just a full disclosure, this is a Pat Flynn idea. Pat will pull 10 people out of his email list and email 10 people. I made the mistake of emailing everybody on my list. So I had two weeks of back to back to back to back to back. But I had one guy, and this sounds like a humble brag, but it, it just, again, shows you what happens. Is that a guy that's like, he like totally, he's like, I need a fanboy out for about five seconds. And I'm like, okay, go ahead. <laughs> like, if that's <laughs> And it was just like, but it's one of those things where you are the guy that's in their ears or the woman in, in their ears. And uh, I don't know, Jim, what do you think? How, how do you try to build that? Well, I, I completely agree with you on this one that, and I think it takes uh, one person at a time. You know, if you're not, say your audience is, you know, a hundred and 
when they're that small, you have the opportunity to kind of reach all of them. And so Art, what are you doing when they contact you? You know, the other, the other week you and I were talking when I had that headset, we were talking about, um, uh, I was thinking about like some ways of having, um, pilot podcasts. Mm -hmm. So I, <laughs> that afternoon I got an email from Max Trescott and he was like, Hey, I heard you say this on, <laughs> asked the podcast coach. Um, uh, what, what were you thinking? Now I could have done an emailed exchange back and forth with him, but I hate that. I was like, Hey, you got a few minutes to connect. <laughs> Let's just talk about it. Like we have this technology. So it took us a week to, to, to find the time for me to get to call him. Not cause mm -hmm. I'm busy, but I just, I, it just took me a week to get there. But we had this really nice conversation for an hour uh, about him and me. And he, he's in Mountain View, which is really close to where I grew up. And oh, nice. so, yeah, well, we had, I had a conversation, Dave, with the listener. Like you, you want to build engagement, actually have, give them your time, give them some time to have conversations. Max will remember that conversation for a while and, and it builds engagement, right? So, and, and the other thing is, how do you get better at something? You do, you practice, you do more of it, right? The way I got better at the guitar was I played nonstop. And the time I do coaching is group coaching at the School of Podcasting, which by the way, uh, there's one today at one o'clock for the, the awesome supporters and the members of the School of Podcasting. But I was like, I, I'm really, I want to get better at this. And the only way to do that is to do more of it. And I was like, how can I just make this, you know, I, I said, I'll, I'll put this on here if it fills up my worst case scenario, because there really isn't a worst case scenario. I either A, end up with a better relationship with members of the School of Podcasting who hopefully, in theory, then don't unsubscribe as fast. But it fills up my calendar so that people that want to hire me as a consultant, which is a high ticket thing, won't be able to do that. In the end, I'm like, that kind of evens itself out and I end up with a better relationship. So I was like, hey, let's see if this works. So, uh, but what it does is I'm, I'm now getting better insights, especially for that situation where I have people that if they get stuck on something, I get a, a clear, like face-to-face -face visual of like what's really going on here that this person either can't press record or they're struggling. Cause now I can say, I can explain something and see if it worked or not. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I can sit here mm -hmm. on in a podcast and say, Oh, it's like radio, blah, blah, blah. And if it's some millennial, they're like, what's a radio, mm -hmm. you know? So it's, it's cool that you get to see if your explanations make sense. Well, it, it, you just get this opportunity to connect and then that connection, because it's deeper, it, chances are they're going to, they're going to re refer you to others. They'll right. be like, Oh, you know what? I got a buddy in this. You should come and listen. Um, uncle Marv, who's in our, in our chat yes. room, you know, we, he came on the show and in, he's got a tech background and I just reached out to him like, you know, you, we, we need, uh, we should probably be, you know, we should probably, you should be on home gadget geeks. And yeah. he invited me to pod nuts pro. And so he was on this Thursday, he was on uh, my show and I'll be on his show June 23rd. And it's a, just a great way to make a connection in the community. You know, he's a, he's a, a weekly listener here at ask the podcast coach. There's a lot of things that uh, there's a lot of value in having, and, and he's just a super great guy, you know? And yeah. so it was a great, it, it was, it was good to get to know him. I hope to, to continue to expand that relationship. You know, I meet with Ed Sullivan all the time uh, and, and, you know, to build that relationship. He's now has a huge influence on what I do sound wise. He's always giving me sound advice, which is pretty great. So I think all the way back to the beginning of that question, reach out to your listeners and give them some yeah. of your time. It is scalable, Dave. It needs to be scalable. I know you just mentioned like, well, but that's going to take away from paid consulting. No, it'll actually add to your paid consulting. So right. I think you can't afford not to do it. Yeah. So I've just, it was one of those things. And plus everybody and their brother is now offering free podcast uh, yeah. education. And I was like, all right, how can I make mine different? What are they doing? What are they not doing that I could? And I was like, hmm, Let's try this. And again, sometimes it works. Sometimes it blows up in your face. So I was like, well, let's, and so far it's been going gangbusters and people, you know, it's always funny because uh, I call it the quick fix 15. Uh, when you go into my, my website, you can do that. And I've done a couple and none of them have been 15 minutes. It's always, if I don't have anything else on my calendar, right? you know, it's like, why would I go? Oh, sorry. You know, schedule again. 
It's a great so, expectation, though, Dave, to say like, um, you know, uh, there's uh, two sides to this coin. One is to set it for 15 and go for 30 because yeah. you've you've now over uh, you, you've exceeded their expectations. Yeah. Right. Under promised and over delivered. Yeah. Sa same thing as on your rate. So say you have a you have an hourly rate of, of 199, 200 bucks. Yeah. Let's say your, your hourly rate 200 bucks. It, you can bring that down to 100 and all of a sudden they're like, man, I'm getting a great deal. Right. Yeah. It's all about expectations. So I love that idea of when you're giving them time, set it for less and give them more on your rate, make it more, but charge them less. Yeah. Kim says, I had a Zoom call with a listener in Spain. We talked for an hour. And she's continued to contact me. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. it. No, right on. I think that's that's the way you grow your audience when it's small. And I, I think there's a huge advantage to having a small audience. I like them small. That's it. Cause you can do stuff that the big people can't exactly. Yeah. The big ones so, are just trolls. You know, the trolls come in and then their <laughs> people are mean to each other and they, yeah. they start having fights and do like, we, this is dumb. Do we have time for the trifecta? I think so. Yes. Three nerd questions in one ah, day. Yes. H have you ever thought of running your own website or an email server? Yeah. Don't do it. Yeah. I was going to say that's, that's why there's, that's why there's, you know, unless um, you really want to, right? yeah, unless you, why would I, can I do anything better than Maple Grove partners? No. no. Can I no. Run, do something better than May or light or MailChimp or whatever you're using? Mm -hmm. um, I will say I'm no longer, well, I shouldn't say I'm no longer using it. I'm in the process of using less SendFox. Have I talked about this on the show? No. no. SendFox was a great deal. It was an AppSumo lifetime deal. Blah, blah, blah. Later, they had a thing where if you wanted to, you could pay them 10 bucks. But here's the problem. And once again, uh, you, um, you know, marketers ruin everything. So you sign up and you had X amount of people that you could sign up. And I think it was like 500 or something like that. And then if you wanted more room for people, you could buy more. Great. So what happened was marketers went over, they sign up for SendFox, they buy a list of 500 people, they would upload them to send Fox and then send out a spammy message and then delete those 500 people and go buy another 500 and upload it. And consequently, cause they were sending out just crap emails. Uh, send Fox started to get a bad reputation from whatever the email community or wherever, you know, in terms of having your email be received. So they had to uh, remove the ability for people to manage their own list. Like I can't go in and say, Hey, anybody, like if somebody doesn't open up an email after so many attempts, they are labeled as inactive. And then when mm -hmm. I send, I can say, Hey, I have to, and, and to their record, they're great about it. If I say, Hey, I'd like you to remove all the inactive people on my logical weight loss podcast wait list in less than 24 hours. It's gone. But it just bugs me that I have to contact somebody for that. And I was like, uh, so I started playing with mailer light they have a free program. And then the next up version is like 10 bucks, but it was just nothing against send Fox, great people, but it's just one of like, ugh. so, and I get, I understand completely why they're doing what they're doing. It's just one of those cases where, you know, if you just want a basic email list, that's fine. And definitely turn on double opt-in because that was the other thing I had uh, like 400 guys from Russia named Roger, joined my list the one day and I was like, it was literally Roger. Oh, they were all named and it was like some Yahoo or hotmail thing. So I could never, I got a whole bunch of people to join my list and like they, it was all spammy. And I'm like, yeah. why would you, I, I still can't figure out the motivation for them signing up to be on my mailing list. You're like, this get, doesn't get you anything. I'm just going to send you things. I, wh uh, what are you hoping for? So I never did. I never really did understand that. But Yeah. So, well, Jim, what is coming up on the average guy.tv? Yeah, Uncle Marv comes on the show. He's a sysadmin over at podnutspro.com. Uh, and um, uh, Marv talks, uh, we talk a lot about like networking and, you know, building networks. He's a sysadmin. So a lot of that kind of back end stuff. And so a lot of my listeners are, th th that's who they are. So I brought him on to kind of meet that niche for my listeners. So it'll be published a little bit later today out at the average guy.tv. And for anyone listening on Clubhouse, it sounds like we're ending, but we're not. We got another uh, half hour coming up on the School of Podcasting, being that some people are a little like weary about going out to podcast events. I got to talk to the one and only Dan Franks from Podcast Movement. So we'll get kind of the behind the scenes of what's going on with Podcast Movement and the steps they're taking to hold their event in August in Nashville. And yet give everybody the option to do 
whatever they want to do. You want to fist bump. You want to do social distancing. You want to tackle and hug people. They're trying to figure out how to, to make that available in that whole nine yards. So that is coming up on Monday's show along with something else that is escaping my mind right now. So, but th there will be more to that uh, as well. So, but uh, thanks to Mark over at podcastbranding.co. Thanks to the chat room. Currently we have 19 people watching and everybody at clubhouse. And uh, again, don't forget if you want to be an awesome supporter, super easy. Just go over to ask the podcastcoach.com slash shop and stick around for some post show. Except I thought that said, <laughs> 12 and it's uh i went dyslexic uh, a minute 21 oh. yeah we have 30 <laughs> this is going to be the world's longest fade in like, just a little more all right we'll little... see we'll see you next week <laughs> or you could get up and dance maybe that's what it is it's the extended dance version